In this video, I'm going to take a suggestion made by Reifen on board and give my take on must-have orchids based on fragrance. Now, seeing as this is such a complex thing to differentiate one from the other, and there are so many orchids out there, as well as individual perceptions on fragrances, as in someone may find a fragrance pleasant, whereas someone else may recoil and sense something completely different, I'm going to take the suggestion in another direction. What I'm going to do in this video is categorize fragrance profiles and match orchids with those. The idea being, if you are partial to a certain perfume, fragrance, or aroma, you will be able to identify which orchid specifically to look out for and which not, as well as the genus. Seeing as not all orchids that I can speak of are available worldwide, pointing out the genus will be a great baseline for you to then know what you are buying. Thank you, Reifen, for your suggestion. I hope by doing it this way, orchids are easier to categorize and subsequently source. The key roll footage you see is Dendrobium of Philum. Not one I would say has a bold fragrance, but this visual gets me every time and when I can use it, I do. There is a disclaimer I would like to get out of the way as well. This orchid fragrance profile recommendation is not to be confused with easy to grow. If you would like specifics about any of the orchids or genus I'm going to mention, then feel free and leave that in the comments. There are environmental challenges when it comes to growing orchids as well, and it is possible that what I suggest and show is not ideal for some conditions. However, if what I'm about to clear up is of any help at all, as we negotiate the fragrance profiles and orchids that go along with those, let me tell you that all orchids I can speak of are growing without any bells and whistles. To say I am growing orchids in an uncontrolled environment is speaking truth. I do not use supplemental lighting, heating, or humidifiers. So, that in itself gives you a great idea as to what the orchids I point out in this video are capable of, if they get additional TLC from you, the grower. Right, sometimes I may sound a little long-winded, and for that I apologize. I have my reasons when it comes to videos like these. I do not want to mislead, risk any misinterpretations if I were to dive head on into the topic. So if you're still with me, thank you so, so much for being here. Thank you for clicking on the video. I have broken down the fragrance profiles based on orchids in my collections, ones that I can speak of and if I do not grow an orchid or a genus and it pops up, then based on extensive research, I can speak on the fragrance of said orchid or genus. Across the board, Orchids come with many fragrances. Some are obvious and carry a single note, and some are a little bit more complex with several layers, depending on what time of day or night the blooms turn fragrant, as well as the parentage of an orchid, if we were to discuss hybrids. The most popular fragrances, in my opinion, are, well, popular, let me qualify that, the most referenced fragrance profiles are rose, jasmine, lemon citrus, orange citrus, soap, floral, fruity, spicy, including sweet or medicinal, like cinnamon, fowl, I leave this one to your imagination, <laughs> sugary, honeysuckle, molasses, waxy, just to name a few. In my opinion, those are the most common ones and I shall be referring to them. All of these fragrances have the tendency to overlap with a single bloom as well. I will do my best to be as specific as possible. And by the way, if you have any additions that you have in your collection, please add those into the comments as well. I am sure that everyone that looks for more options goes to the comments and well. It's just helpful to have as many contributions to the topic as possible. And speaking of contributions, <laughs> getting a video like this into the algorithm is a little complicated sometimes. So if you could contribute to this video being exposed to many eyes worldwide, please give it a like, share it around, and please do the hat trick. Subscribe to the channel should this be the first time that you've clicked on a video from my channel. Also, check out the mission statement in the description of each video. This is what I love doing. Taking suggestions and requests on board make the channel work for you. That is my mission statement. 
There's also an added little heart underneath each video that has a dollar sign in it. The thanks contribution is also very much appreciated and helps support the orchids. YouTube housekeeping done and dusted, let's start with the rose fragrance profile. Dendrobium Ophyllum has a rose fragrance, but it is so faint, so we'll just put that where it belongs, we'll put it aside. But orchids with this gorgeous fragrance come in a range of genus, and granted some are more elegant than others, which I will try and list in the order of nicest, strongest to the ones that have the fragrance, but certain conditions need to be met, i.e. temperature and light. In my collection, I have Cattleya Dinard Blue Heaven, divine, Cattleya Maxima, divine, Okay, I will stop saying divine because obviously I am pointing them out. <laughs> there is a reason because they're divine. Anyway, Cattleya purpuratas have a very clear rose fragrance as well. And in my collection, the Striata reigns supreme among the three Cattleyas that I have, possessing the strongest rose fragrance. Moving on to orchids that exude a jasmine fragrance. Not exclusively jasmine, but notes of lemon citrus with soap and vanilla are very evident when it comes to angracoids across the board. Be they big or small, these layers are all within the fragrance profile of angracoid blooms. My Crestwood Tomorrow Star is more on the lemony soapy side and the jasmine comes through after that finishing off with a note of vanilla. The fragrance is somewhat complex and it can be confusing to the nose until you shut out every other influence and understand what it is you're actually inhaling. This orchid could be a nose crinkler if only given one chance at a sniff. Give it several more sniffs and wow, it's truly amazing. Keep in mind that all angracoids are nocturnally fragrant, so you would need to be around the orchids at night to appreciate the fragrance. Come up on one during the day and you will be disappointed and think that they are not fragrant and what you hear everybody talking on about bears no truth. Oh, but it is the night time, it's when they come alive. My bossery has the same layers as my Crestwood Tomorrow Star, however, it is much heavier on the final vanilla note. Mr. City Eye, very prominent when it comes to jasmine, as is fastuosa. But do not be fooled by big or small blooms. Size does not matter when it comes to the intensity of the fragrance. Just because some blooms are bigger, it does not mean that their fragrance is more pronounced. So that makes the smaller blooms even more impressive because they can really hold their own. Lemon citrus is a fragrance that is well recognized in many orchid blooms. And in my collection, I cannot get enough of that fragrance when it comes to Cattleya purpurata variety Beckhäuserie. Oh, add to that fresh lemon fragrance, a hint of sugar and cream, and I promise you, salivating is a side effect. It is just delicious. In this fragrance profile, we cannot not talk about Vanda Falcata. This miniature Vanda has what it takes to blow your mind. It is predominantly nocturnally fragrant, and I say predominantly because you can sense the fragrance during the daytime as well. But once early evening into midnight kicks in, <laughs> wow, it is next level incredible. The fresh and sweet citrus fragrance that permeates the air together with a mix of sweet vanilla, it is such a delightful fragrance that I could describe it as comforting. Sitting in the dark, this fragrance puts a smile on my face. If you get the hybrid, the loose neary, you have the best of both worlds because of the parentage. Rhynchostylus is fragrant during the day and Falcata fragrant at night. The result is the same fragrance but intense all day long as well as into the night. It is insanity when you look at how delicate the blooms are. It shouldn't make sense, but it does. And if you have the space, conditions and time, Vanda Denisoniana is a must have as well. Lemony, sweet, sugary, tangy, fresh and fragrant day as well as night. It is incredible, just incredible. Woo, woo. <laughs> Orange citrus is a fragrance I thoroughly appreciate, but I do not have many orchids that I can suggest with this fragrance. Again, if you're able to expand on which orchids have that orange citrus fragrance, in Spain we call it azahar, please include those in the comments. My experience with my Dendrobium unicum is a delight. Not only do the blooms last a very long time, six weeks easily, but they are consistently fragrant during the day with a fresh, tangy, tantalizing tangerine fragrance. <laughs> 
I say tangerine because it's not as acidic a fragrance as orange would be. It is on the sweeter side. Add to that that sometimes there is a warmth of an apricot note. The combination is just delicious. So that is the extent of my orange citrus recommendation. So moving on swiftly to the next major category of detectable fragrances. Floral. Now we hear that a lot in the orchid hobby. In my opinion, we describe the term floral when we can't 100% pinpoint the fragrance to being something akin to something specific. But floral also refers to pleasant, satisfying, and wonderful. When I say floral, I mean the fragrance that you would have when walking into a florist shop. A mix of everything in the room. Nothing really stands out, but there's a pleasantness about it. In my collection, I have many floral fragrant orchids, but I tend to get really specific when I describe the fragrances of my blooms, so I struggle with this category. However, many cattleyas, oncidiums, and to some degree dendrobiums have a floral fragrance. If at the point of filming this video, nothing specific in a general term of floral with an orchid in my collection comes to mind, please add your suggestions of floral fragrant orchids into the comments. Maybe you know my collection well enough and have heard me describe a bloom as floral that is currently skipping my mind. Include that as well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but... I'm going to mention an orchid that I had the pleasure of experiencing its fragrance for the first time this year in 2023, and that is the White Bridal Snow White. She fits into this floral category, but I can separate the fragrance layers too. Gardenia and Lady of the Night. The shrub, it is summer, elegant, dreamy, and makes you want more. The White Bridal has that fragrance as the second note because the gardenia is in your face powerful. So if I were indecisive of what the fragrance actually denotes, this orchid would fall under the category floral. That includes Dendrobium nobili complex hybrids as well. They come in on all kinds of fragrance nuances. Mine really stand out with a freesia fragrance, while the species Cooksonianum has the rose accent. If you're looking for pleasant spring fragrance during the time of year when we are all gagging for spring, the nobili complex hybrids are a safe acquisition. Fruity is a fragrance profile that I attribute to many summer blooming Phalaenopsis. They have a cheerful fruity fragrance with many different notes on some occasions. However, fruity can also be described as the fragrance of a bag of Skittles. Sweet, tangy, mixed with powdered sugar or wax. Many summer blooming fowls have this characteristics in their fragrance, and then some come with additional exotic notes, like my Tabasco Tex. It has a final note of chili. <coughs> it's all in the name, you know. <laughs> but it is the fruity fragrance that draws you in. You take a wonderful confident sniff and then get hit with the spice that tickles the back of your nose, making you want to sneeze. While other summer blooming fowls have just a wonderful fruity fragrance all day long, no strings attached, full of sugar delight, there are others that are truly just waxy in their fragrance, like my Corner Servi variety Chatela Day. No matter how many blooms this orchid gets, when you get up close, it's waxy. So if you're into fragrant Phalaenopsis, then go for the yellow, pink, and purple hued ones. <laughs> I don't grow a Bellina, but I've heard only wonderful things about her fragrance or even a Leodoro Sweet Memory, which I do grow, I still have. I hope she will stay in the collection, but her fragrance is the same thing. Fruity Skittles, let's just put it like that. If it is at all possible to take a complex fragrance, in cases like those, Fruity Skittles work. So tangent alert, if you like raspberries, anything raspberry in form of dessert with sugar on top, mine would be a raspberry pavlova. Thank you very much. I'll have that as a starter, a main course and a dessert and all of that with a cafe con leche. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, if you're into the tangy, the fresh and the sugary, then a dendrobium anosmum or anything that has anosmum as a parent is never a bad purchase. Now that fragrance, it is mind-blowing as well. Fresh, tangy raspberries with sugar. Ugh. And it just so happens to be a candidate that makes you salivate. <laughs> anyway, back to the Phalaenopsis summer bloomers, because there's one that, in my opinion, knocks others out of the park, and that is the Violacea. When it comes to her, we can seg into spice fragrance profile, because wow-wee, her cinnamon fragrance is out of this world. 
French toast without the bread and the undernote of egg. None of that. Just cinnamon, sugar, cookies, etc., etc., etc. Literally lose yourself in that beautiful fragrance. If you are into cinnamon, that is, <laughs> then the Violacea or any hybrid with Violacea in it will be a winner. There is no second guessing. While she is a small bloom, she is potent, but in a wonderful way. If you like a lot of spicy cinnamon that has a kick to it and have space for a large orchid, then the one and only Stanhopia in my collection is the one that I cannot say enough about. The fragrance of this orchid is insane, and if grown indoors could turn out to be challenging. As in, potent. <laughs> I can smell my in-bloom stand from where I am sat at the opposite end of the patio at my desk. She carries that cinnamon fragrance all over the place. If she were growing indoors in my collection, I would not care. It is such a delicious experience, and I can say that with conviction because I have a Fred Clark Yara After Dark Black Pearl that has the same spicy cinnamon fragrance, and this one is indoors when it blooms. While the Stanhope you can do what it does with two blooms on a spike, the After Dark Black Pearl will give you the same experience with 40 blooms. But wow, cinnamon is super predominant. But add ginger to the spice profile and top that off with sugar, your mind will be blown at After Dark Black Pearl as well. Now, I have heard that many Catacetinae have a beautiful fragrance. However, some say that a lot of them also have a medicinal note to them, which according to opinions can be off-putting. One example would be the cherry cough syrup when it comes to the wine delight. So if you're interested in the Catacetinae genus, then ask the seller for a clear description of the fragrance profile so that you have a good understanding of what you can expect. My Orchid Glade Jack of Diamonds has no fragrance at all, so there's the opposite side of the spectrum with this genus. While we were looking at this beautiful spectacle that is the Dendrobium of Philum, there's no way I'm going to leave the spice profile without mentioning Dendrobium Bensoniae. If you like the smell of sugar vanilla cookies, then this orchid is a must-have, and she is fragrant during the day. All day. And there's no doubt in my mind what she smells like because I love my sugar cookies. Little side note. In Kenya, we used to have tea time between 4 p.m. or 5 p.m., usually with sandwiches, pastries, and cookies. Well, we had a sugar cookie. The brand was called Nice, or Nice, depending if you are in France and you're next to Cannes. And I am a donker. <laughs> so, sweet Kenya tea and sugar cookie dunked in that tea, which we call chai. Not the chai that you know in the Western world, but sweet Kenyan tea is called chai. And then dunk a sugar cookie in that. <laughs> a sugar overload, <laughs> maybe. That's why tea is between 4 and 5 p.m. so that you get your last little kick to continue doing what you have to do before you can wind down in the evening. But anyway, it's yum. <laughs> So maybe that is why I'm so partial to the Bensonier, because she is the upmarket version of a sugar cookie that I grew up with, but she has vanilla. <laughs> and that's fancy. <laughs> okay, moving on to honeysuckle and molasses. I'm putting these two together for this genus because no matter which orchid I have in form of prostechias, two out of the three have this amazing combination of honeysuckle and molasses, and they are potent. <laughs> if grown indoors, it could be headache-inducing. I am not able to confirm or deny that because mine bloom during the season that they are outdoors, and I can tell you they take over the space with their fragrance. Personally, I find it super pleasant, and I'm always happy to have them in bloom. My Prostechia Garciana Alba, while fragrant, is a little bit more subtle. Talcum powder, but not the Johnson & Johnson stuff, no. The fragrance that registers talcum powder in my mind is an elegant one. Something that was perfectly crafted for a lady of standing and only sold in speciality shops. So, you can see that if you're looking for fragrant orchids when choosing the Prostechia genus, you cannot go wrong. To my understanding, this genus has fragrant orchids, period. If you have a Prostechia as a parent and a hybrid, you are also almost guaranteed to have a fragrant orchid. Now, I normally do not like to end on a bad note, but bad is all relative when it comes to orchids. I cannot, however, do a video on must-have orchids based on fragrance without at least mentioning the Bulbophyllum genus. <laughs> you see, they get a bad rep, and for reasons... 
But there are so many Bulbo species that have wonderful pleasant fragrances which I would like to advocate for. While I have not had those in my collection ever, I do have a care guide video on Bulbo Film specifically and I researched a lot of species and picked out the ones that have a pleasant fragrance. Bulbo Film fragrance notes include, yes, they do, they include watermelon, strawberry, citrus, honey, cinnamon, and many others that are included and identified in the care cards of the species I researched. I will link that video in the description if you're interested to do a deep dive into Bulba Films. It is an insane genus and deserves a little more positive attention than the reputation it has because of the foul smelling blooms. There is more to Bulbos than meets the nose. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> oh my. So, if this video inspired you and gave you a roadmap as to where to start looking or where you can expand your collection with orchids that are fragrant, please like the video, share it, and leave any comment with additional information, recommendations based on your experience with orchids that you grow. I look forward to hearing from you and seeing what your suggestions are. Because while I'm not currently on the market for any orchids, there is no reason I cannot have an open list and add on to that for future reference. <laughs> Thank you, Reifen, for your suggestion. I hope I did it justice. Thank you so much for watching. Know that you and your time are so appreciated. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition, though, that you stay safe. Please, take care. Bye.